So thank you everybody for coming. It's really nice to see a lot of familiar faces here tonight. Um, it's a great turnout. Uh, I'm just going to start by telling you a little bit of a history about nurse practitioners in Canada. And uh, nurse practitioners are not new in Canada. We've been around since uh, 1967. The first training programs actually were developed at Dalhousie University in Halifax. And uh, at that time, the role, the expanded role for nurses was initially developed to fill the gap and provide care to patients in northern areas of the provinces and rural areas where um, there was a lack of GPs and uh, physician access. So today, um, the role of nurse practitioners has expanded. And uh, now there's more and more throughout the provinces, um, especially in uh, urban as well as the rural centers and uh, in acute care and uh, also in primary health care. And uh, the role of the nurse practitioner um, was developed to fill that gap and uh, more and more doors are open now. Um, however, um, the role still is to fill that gap and to make our health care system run a little bit smoother and to provide better access and care to patients. So what is a nurse practitioner? Um, nurse practitioners are registered nurses and uh, we have advanced education. Uh, in Newfoundland, we currently have a bachelor program and a master's degree program. And throughout Canada, many of the provinces have gone to master's degree programs. And in the United States, um, I believe they're looking at even going further and going to a doctorate program with that. Um, advanced training as well. Um, during the nurse practitioner training, um, everyone goes out in primary health care and does extensive work with uh, GPs um, for their training. And uh, we have to meet uh, rigorous licensing and examination requirements to assume that expanded role, uh, which will then allow nurse practitioners to diagnose um, order diagnostic tests, order lab work, and interpret those diagnostic tests, um, prescribe medications, perform procedures, and with rheumatology, some of those procedures would be like joint injections, uh, aspirations, and out in primary health care, um, minor procedures, uh, mole removals, things like that, um, all within the nurse practitioner's scope of practice. So the core concepts, um, expertise in practice, autonomy, professional and clinical leadership, and uh, research as well, undertaking research. Um, the nurse practitioner's role is to provide holistic clinical autonomous uh, and timely care for patients. And uh, with regards to holistic care, when patients come into clinic, um, we don't just look at their joints and how many are swollen and tender, but uh, the disease process is more than that. Uh, it's, there's pain, there's anxiety, um, there's also uh, often loss of function, and uh, patients have a lot of stress, and there's family stress as well. So we look at uh, not only the, uh, the joint part, but we look at the physical, the emotional, and uh, all the systems that are affected together. We provide education, leadership, and undertake research. And quality care is built on trust and teamwork. Teamwork is very important, and uh, nurse practitioners are part of that uh, team in order to improve uh, patient care. Um, it, the, the team is uh, all about nurse practitioners, the rheumatologist, physio, OT, pharmacy, social work, dietitian, other nurses, and rheumatology support staff are also very important. Um, family physicians are also part of that team. With psoriatic arthritis, the dermatologists uh, uh, can be part of that team. Psychology, certainly, um, I didn't put it in here, but they're also an important part. And uh, of course, the individual patient is the center of the team and the most important part. So what do nurse practitioners do? Well, uh, we can see new patients and uh, help with waitlist management. And uh, as you probably know, the waitlist uh, 
right now for to see new patients is months to years, so that can be quite stressful and uh, we can certainly help uh, relieve the wait list. Uh, we can see patients in follow-up. Uh, we can do medical histories, conduct physical examinations, uh, order and interpret diagnostic tests, formulate treatment plans, and every patient that comes in is affected uh, differently with arthritis. So these treatment plans, of course, are very individualized, uh, depending on uh, the disease process uh, with the patient. We provide education, psychosocial support, which is very important, collaborate with uh, the rheumatologist and all of the other medical team members, and uh, provide re patient referrals uh, to other healthcare professionals when necessary. And uh, just to go back to um, the teamwork, uh, rheumatology, Kim Roberts Pennell is the nurse practitioner in rheumatology right now, and uh, there is an interdisciplinary team that is just starting, which is great um, to educate new patients when they come in. Um, they will see physiotherapy, occupational therapy, pharmacy, the nurse practitioner, the rheumatologist, um, everybody, and the social worker, and hopefully a psychologist uh, will be part of that team in the near future. So um, that's a new initiative that's just begun. Um, education is a huge part of the role of nurse practitioners. Um, so we educate patients about the disease process. It is an inflammatory process. It's uh, systemic often, which means that uh, it affects more than your joints. Other systems are involved. Um, and uh, we instruct patients, you know, to watch out. Uh, several, many patients will develop extra articular features, such as uveitis, inflammatory bowel disease, psoriasis, enthesitis, which is pain where the uh, tendons and cartilage uh, insert into the joints. And sometimes patients will come in and they'll say, you know, uh, I have a lot of heel pain, uh, I have a lot of pain in the back of my legs or pain in my arm, and uh, I'm sure it's not part of my arthritis, but when in fact it probably is. So we'll just educate about the disease process and how to manage that. Um, education about the treatments. Certainly lifestyle plays a huge role in, uh, in uh, your treatment. Uh, as Andrea mentioned, exercise is one of the gold standards for treatment diet, weight loss programs. Um, the, of course, anybody who's very overweight and you have a, a swollen knee or a bad hip, uh, excess weight can further stress these already stressed joints. And uh, managing pain and fatigue. And uh, Andrea mentioned uh, pacing as well, um, taking rest, frequent rest, rest periods during the day. And uh, alternative therapies, for uh, arthritis also includes things like massage therapy, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, acupuncture, uh, yoga, tai chi. So we provide that education to patients as well, and I'm sure And there's a lot more uh, relaxation, um, stress reduction, and uh, different alternative therapies that are available. Um, medications as well, uh, we do educate patients on how to properly use their medications and side effects to look out for and any contraindications. Uh, health promotion, again, is a huge role that we play in educating patients. Uh, uh, again, diet, exercise, uh, these are all uh, ways of staying healthy. We'll talk about healthy eating habits, low sodium diets for people with hypertension, low fat diets, weight reduction again, um, the benefits of physical activity, as Andrea said, with uh, mobility, strength, range of motion. Uh, we'll talk about skin care, uh, especially anybody who has psoriasis. We talk about uh, application of uh, steroid creams. Uh, when you should apply, how often you should apply, and uh, we talk about uh, using creams and keeping the skin moist so that it doesn't dry out and crack and to prevent infection as well. And different uh, supplements in healthcare, vitamin D and calcium, which we should all be taking because we live in North America and uh, don't see enough sun here to produce enough vitamin D. Folic acid, especially for patients who are taking medications like methotrexate, 
Um, counseling is part of our role as well uh, for smoking cessation, stress management, pain control, um, talking about the different modalities that are available for pain control, ordering medications, um, it, for example, massage therapy, heat, nice, acupuncture, physiotherapy, exercise, etc. And uh, disease prevention is also part of patient education. Uh, so osteoporosis uh, prevention, again, vitamin D and calcium supplements, uh, preventing gastrointestinal disease. Uh, many of our patients come in and they're taking anti-inflammatory medications or steroids for flare-ups. And uh, which are very hard on the stomach and can cause ulcerations. So we will educate patients and tell them how to take the medications and to make sure they take it with food and uh, also order uh, gastroprotective medications, um, proton pump inhibitors, etc., to protect uh, the stomach uh, from ulcerations and GI bleeds. Um, prevention of cardiovascular disease. Um, as I said, uh, inflammatory arthritis uh, uh, not only affects your joints, but it affects other systems, and uh, patients with inflammatory arthritis are uh, more prone to develop uh, cardiovascular disease. So we will we'll talk to patients and educate them about um, ways of preventing uh, exercise, again, diet, weight loss, um, taking uh, omega-3 supplements, fish, eating fish in the diet, uh, getting your fish oils um, for good cholesterol, and uh, musculoskeletal, many of our patients come in and they have back pain and they work in an office and I'll, I'll uh, often talk to them about ergonomics and uh, having your knees at a 90 degree angle, your elbows at a 90 degree angle and uh, your computer at a level where you're not stretching your neck to look up or, or look sideways uh, so you're not further stressing your joints. And um, infections is huge for people with autoimmune diseases and uh, taking uh, medications that affect the immune system. So um, education uh, about infection prevention, um, keeping up to date on your immunizations, having your yearly flu shot, avoiding uh, people during flu season uh, in large crowds, careful hand washing, uh, pneumococcal vaccine uh, is another vaccine that we do often recommend, and uh, the herpes zoster vaccine for shingles, which is now available. Uh, we'll talk to patients about that as well. And uh, uh, tetanus, just keeping up to date on tetanus and uh, other vaccines, of course, um, we're able to provide that education. Travel education, which uh, vaccines are safe depending on which medications you're taking, if you're immune compromised or not, uh, whether you can take live vaccines. We'll discuss all that with patients as well. Um, we are also patient advocates. Um, so our, our goal is to empower patients so that they can self-manage their disease. However, uh, we do act as advocates and provide information to patients about different support programs, such as the Arthritis Society, the Canadian Spondylitis Association, as Michael's talked to you about, and SPARC, the Spondyloarthritis Research Consortium of Canada. Um, also provide information about uh, different websites um, that are available that have reputable information that you can access, uh, such as uh, Room Info, www.roominfo.com, and there's many other uh, websites that uh, we do use and tell patients about. And uh, assisting patients in obtaining medical treatments. Uh, a lot of times patients uh, do not have their own private insurance and uh, during flare-ups and when they require biologic medications, we do have uh, access to some clinical trial drugs that we will enroll patients in, and several of our patients here today are, have been involved in our clinical trials, which would provide access to these medications that cost about 25000 plus a year. Um, and with the clinical trials, uh, there's great follow-ups follow with uh, them as well. Uh, so that's always good and available to, pay, to many of our patients. Um, if patients uh, don't qualify for clinical trials, they can't uh, obtain, they don't have a provincial drug card, 
and uh, of course these medications are very, very expensive. We uh, sometimes uh, advocate for the patient and request compassionate drug therapy from uh, the drug companies, and uh, we'll assist patients with uh, government funding applications as well. They can be pretty cumbersome and sometimes hard to fill out, so we'll help with that. So nurse practitioner care is based on evidence. Um, we try to keep up to date on current research findings, and our clinical decisions are based on current research. And how we do that is through um, going to educational conferences and seminars, meeting with other professionals, uh, being part of advisory boards, reading rheumatology journals, and uh, uh, researching reputable information websites. So the purpose of having nurse practitioners in rheumatology is to improve the quality of care, to improve service for patients, to complement care by the rheumatologist and free up some of their time so they, they can spend more time on the very complex and acute patients, to improve the continuity of care and to improve the coordination of care. And the bottom line is nurses really do care. And nurse practitioners can improve access to care and reduce wait times. And uh, this is just a picture of uh, how someone may feel if they ha have inflammatory arthritis and they've been on the wait list for months to years and they're waiting for to see a rheumatologist to, to get treatment. And uh, we can help with that. <laughs>